So let's welcome Phil on stage. Hello. 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 Oh, I love your bass and guitar. <laughs> I play guitar. Right. I don't play it okay. enough. I think uh, that's my uh, that's my problem there. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. I think we are Is all, that all working. Now. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Thanks very much, Jackie. All right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, it's evening here. I'm uh, coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, as uh, as Jackie said, my name is Phil Nash. Uh, I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Uh, Twilio, if you don't know, is a uh, communications platform. Uh, that is, it is a bunch of APIs uh, that you can use to connect or communicate with users uh, via things like voice, video, email, messaging, uh, any way you can think of connecting or communicating with users. Um, you can use you can use Twilio APIs to do that inside your own application. Um, do please find me uh, on the internet so we can uh, hang out after this uh, conference is gone. I am Phil Nash, kind of all over the place. Um, or, uh, or drop me an email at philnash at twilio.com. I'm always interested to hear from people uh, and their experiences of APIs and, and what they're working on. Uh, also, uh, I am uh, watching the chat. Uh, so do say hi in the uh, in the hop in chat, in the API days chat here, and uh, and it'll be great to uh, just um, you know give us a wave or something and pop any questions you have uh, as I go through this talk. And so what is this talk? Well, we're talking about webhooks. Uh, so I should probably start with a quick definition of a webhook, although I kind of hope that most people uh, know what we're talking about here. Uh, webhooks are user-defined HTTP callbacks. Um, whereas, uh, you know, in, t in terms of an API, normally, you know, we have, um, uh, we provide like the API endpoints that other users make, uh, make calls to, right? Uh, and we send them back the data that we want them to have. In the, in the webhook, it's kind of the opposite way around, right? We, as a as an API platform, send data to a to a URL and uh, an endpoint that uh, a user defines, and they get to send back uh, whatever they want as well. Uh, this is really important uh, when it comes to developing with Twilio, uh, as you can imagine. Um, every kind of interaction uh, that uh, that that happens on uh, the Twilio platform uh, is. Uh, uh, sort of driven by webhooks. If a text message comes in, that sends a webhook. You can respond to that uh, text message, uh, that webhook to send a message back and you drive phone calls with it and you respond to emails with it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so this is really important to us. And so, um, and of course it's really important to many API platforms. Uh, Twilio, Twilio, SendGrid, that's our email platform. Uh, Stripe, GitHub, Dropbox, Alt Zero, Slack. Uh, as as Jenks was saying earlier, uh, zero sends something like two and a half million um, uh, webhooks a day or a month or something like that. A lot of webhooks being sent. Um, so what's the trouble? Well, if you know what a webhook is, that's great. And if you've used them before, then you kind of you know how to use them. Uh, but there's a kind of developer education problem uh, in this. Uh, in fact, a developer experience problem. Uh, and it, this has been a great day of talking about various developer experiences. Uh, things like uh, Jenks talking about how developers experience an API via its SDK, or Alona talking about uh, how a developer may experience an API via that developer portal. Uh, in this case, one of the ways that uh, developers are using the platform is via uh, the webhooks, and how they experience those webhooks and how they develop with them is absolutely crucial to how they appreciate your API. Um, so if you are new to webhooks, you might be asking, how do I test this? How do I work with this? I've built this application on my on my computer, uh, and now I have to receive an incoming HTTP request from the internet? Well, if you know, you know there are online tools like RequestBin or PostBin, which uh, allow you to at least kind of dump out what a webhook is sending to you. Uh, and then there are tunnels like ngrok, that's my favorite, or local tunnel, or Servio, or Tunnel2. Things keep popping up. Uh, and they allow you to like open that external tunnel uh, from the internet, give you a public URL that a webhook can then hit and be sent down into your application. They're great. Or, you know, if you're really having fun, just deploy and test in production. Um, not my recommendation, but, you know, eh, it might happen. Uh, and th that could be a user's experience, a developer's experience of your platform. They're like, I have to push this live. We don't want that to happen. Uh, so it's a developer education problem here. Um, so what can we do about it? 
Well, this is this is where the talk comes in, and this is about the experiences that we've had at Twilio over the years of trying to educate and help developers who are new to the platform, new to webhooks, learn what they are, develop their applications without kind of without falling apart, without not knowing what to do, without pushing to production in order to test. I want to start by saying that documentation, uh, it should go without saying. Uh, we need to write this stuff down, uh, document the webhooks that we're going to send, the format of the webhooks, the parameters we'll send with them. That is kind of our baseline here. Without documentation, if you don't have the documentation for this, uh, that's your first job. Uh, so we'll move on to the more important things, more interesting things, perhaps. Uh, our first uh, attempt at this to help developers kind of get on board with at least Twilio and our webhooks was to kind of was to host code for developers uh, to use in various ways, and I'll show you what those are. We start with Twimlets. Um, Twimlets was an experiment uh, back in uh, uh, from very early Twilio, very early Twilio. So early, uh, this is kind of what the web page looked like up until a couple of years ago. So the Twilio Labs web page with uh, with our friend Dr. Twilio uh, up the top there. Um, that is an incredibly old logo uh, sat upon his uh, shoulders there. So uh, this is this has been around since uh, many, many years longer than I've been at Twilio. Uh, but these Twimlets uh, were applications that they were um, actually effectively just URLs that we provided uh, for developers that uh, had little little PHP applications uh, behind the, uh, the behind the URLs that allowed you to do certain common uh, use cases for the webhooks. So as you can see at the bottom of uh, this um, screenshot, you could forward a call to somebody or keep ringing different phone numbers in order or dial load of numbers at the same time. And then you could kind of chain these. So once you provided one, once you created one Twimblet URL, um, you could chain that into another one. So the, uh, the forward one, you know, will go, will forward to a new URL if a call's not answered and you could turn that into a, a webhook, uh, into a voicemail or something like that. These uh, these open <laughs> these were PHP scripts that just ran, and they and they were used by a surprising number of developers and and companies and businesses uh, in order to power their communications because it meant that they didn't have to spin up anything themselves. They could just see how the API worked, and if it did the job for them, uh, and it, it, these Twimlets answered those webhooks for them um, the way they wanted, then uh, that's all they needed. Pretty good work. Then we move to something else, Twimbins. So around the same time uh, that Twimblets came around, uh, third-party developers actually had built a little site called Twimblebin. And I, po I pointed out like request, uh, request bin and post bin earlier. Twimblebins were like that, just purely for Twimble. And Twimble is the way you respond to uh, a Twilio webhook. So you have to tell it, uh, if you can see on this particular example, um, uh, if you get an incoming message, you can respond with XML that sends this message, and that sends a message back. And so these Twimble bins allowed you to store that XML. It actually um, validated the Twimble for you, uh, and, um, uh, and and responds to hooks uh, to any web hooks with it. Uh, it gave you a public URL which you could deal with that, that with. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, it gave you a public URL. Uh, the one slight problem with this one was that uh, whilst the Twimble you could use was kind of unlimited to you, it was always static. There was no kind of uh, interactive uh, stuff with it. So you could not kind of react to uh, user input if you were doing something with this. But it was so good, like we thought this was so useful that we eventually uh, bought a uh, Twimble bin off these third party developers and integrated it into the Twilio console. So you can use this uh, as part of your Twilio account now. Uh, we also added uh, some slight templating um, so that you could uh, template in using like mustache templates, uh, things from uh, URL parameters. More recently, of course, the uh, um, advent of serverless came along and this gave us uh, further ideas in that uh, these uh, Twimblets were restricted to the use case and Twimble bins are restricted to being mostly static. But if people could run code that they'd written on our infrastructure, and they wouldn't have to be hosting it or deploying it or, or uh, doing things with that themselves. So we ended up investing in building a little bit of serverless stuff. And that's what this, this is what that looks like inside the Twilio console right now. You get an editor where you can add functions and static assets. Uh, and those functions are uh, Node.js, right? You can run JavaScript in there. You have the power of Node.js. You have the um, uh, entire 
npm library kind of at hand to run code in response to an incoming webhook. Uh, this is really useful. Um, you don't have to you don't have to start up any kind of development uh, whatsoever on your own machine. You can do it entirely inside the Twilio console now. Um, this has helped a lot of people just get going really quickly, uh, and you can you can do whatever you want with it. I'm going to come back to this because I can tell you that my favorite way to write code is not by putting it into a web browser. Um, it's, it, I have a lot more uh, process around that normally, including version control and testing and other stuff like that. So um, let's uh, let's move on. We also, uh, around the same time as the serverless stuff, we were dealing with um, more non-developers coming to try and build things on Twilio as well. And while Twimlet's those classic uh, uh, PHP powered URLs uh, could do, do a bunch of stuff for you. They were still a bit awkward to use. And so we went to work on a thing called Studio. Um, Studio is a drag and drop editor for conversation flows. And as you can see at the top of the trigger, uh, two out of three of these triggers are webhooks. And one is a REST API, so you can uh, initiate a, a thing. But in this particular example, like an incoming call receives the incoming call webhook then goes on to gather input from a user saying, you know, press one for sales or say sales, press two for support or say support, uh, and then can make decisions on that and carry on an entire flow. And this is just a very small one. We've seen huge flows built with this um, over time uh, without you having to write a line of code. Uh, you can write little bits of code, but the, the ideas are here and there are conditionals and there are, uh, you can loop through things. Uh, it's all there. Uh, and then of course, if you do need a bit of code, there are widgets to either call a Twilio function or send an HTTP request yourself. Uh, so that's an interesting one where you start causing your own web hooks effectively. Um, but <laughs> uh, Studio put the power of, of uh, dealing with web hooks and then uh, implementing them into the hands of people that didn't necessarily write code. So those are a bunch of ways that we um, try to make it easy to get started with uh, webhooks and with the Twilio API uh, without you having to work out how to um, run code that can reach the internet yourself. Um, we gave you ways to, we gave developers ways to run code that, that reach the internet. We gave uh, developers uh, examples and existing applications. Next up, we wanted to work on kind of more interactive experiences. Uh, and again, before I joined Twilio, we used to run a conference called TwilioCon. Uh, it's, in, in its more recent form is called Signal, and that just ran uh, last week, as it happens. Um, but TwilioCon, uh, we used to have a, uh, a workshop at, and we don't like to do normal kind of workshops at Twilio. Uh, we've built up a workshop that we called Twilio Quest. It was sort of gamified and felt like a, 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 a an action, a battle, more than it was a, a, a workshop, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but bringing that, uh, we wanted to bring that kind of level of fun and ex uh, an interest uh, in workshops to people, to our other workshops, but also to the internet uh, as well. So Twilio Quest I became Twilio Quest 2, which looked a bit fancier and looked like this. Uh, this was its logo. Uh, and Twilio Quest 2 was an online, uh, so in the browser, uh, workshop tool and, and mission and 8-bit adventure that allows you to, um, uh, that took, took you through learning how Twilio works uh, and how webhooks works. And as you can see in this particular mission, uh, we uh, this is in the kind of getting started missions, setting up NGROC for local development was part of that. So we were incentivizing uh, developers on these workshops to get themselves set up and understand NGROC and how that works to, to work with webhooks. Pretty useful. Um, the problem with this was like, Completing missions would win you XP and, and little things for your character. Uh, but many of these missions, particularly this Engrok one as well, were um, you, couldn't, you couldn't work out whether a user had done it successfully from the, from the internet here. Uh, and so we ended up having to do a lot of these things just in person. And so that sent the team back to the drawing board. Like, what, what can we do to make this even more interactive uh, and even less um, response? Uh, it require like in-person teaching assistants to help. So we ended up with Twilio Quest 3, which has an even fancier logo. I'm a big fan of this. Um, <laughs> and Twilio Quest 3 uh, is a downloadable, installable game that you can play. And it is a full game. In fact, I have a demo here for you. I've got Twilio Quest running right here uh, on my desktop. Uh, and so this is your little character on Twilio Quest. 
uh, and your buddy Cedric, who's a robot who helps you out with stuff. Uh, it has a whole soundtrack, which I'm not playing through this right now. It then um, gives you access to those missions that you wanted to complete. Uh, and I'm going to show you just the, um, I'm going to show you the messaging mission with Cedric again, ready to help you. As you can see, these missions uh, are kind of laser grids there that you can't get past. I'm going to go to one I have done before because I want to show you something in there. Uh, because this is powered by uh, Node.js, uh, it's an elect Electron app as it happens. Um, we actually have access to Node.js in here, which is great. Uh, and so inside this uh, uh, mission, the objective is to respond to an incoming message. And so that is to create a webhook. Uh, and so if we show the code editor, you can see uh, this is a little small on the screen, but I can promise you that this is a, uh, uh, a express application that uh, you know responds to an incoming webhook on, on the slash SMS uh, thing. And it will respond with correct Twimmel that responds with the message Twilio Quest rules. Uh, an excellent message if you ask me. Uh, and if you scroll down a bit further, and again, you probably can't read this and I can't change the font size on this rather sadly. Um, you can see that it not only starts up the server, but it will in the background start up ngrok for you as well. And earlier in the game, I set up a phone number um, as part of the game. And so when I press play there and run the application, not only is I, have I got a local server listening on localhost, it's always also set up an ngrok tunnel, and it's also configured my phone number that I set up earlier to send uh, incoming SMS to that ngrok uh, uh, endpoint. Um, and so if I send a message saying, hello, uh, API days, um, I send that in. We should see that arrive at the bottom of the screen here. I have terrible signal inside my own house. It's still sending. Ha! Come on. There we go. <laughs> right. I got an incoming message from my number that says, hello, API days. And I get a message back saying, Twilio request rules. Um, and I've not had to set up any of this tunneling myself. All I did was press play. All I had to set up was really resp this responding message. Then I can hack the uh, press hack. I succeed in the mission. I win three hearts in my inventory. And you carry on about your, your day as a new Twilio developer. Uh, and so we thought this was a really great kind of interactive experience that uh, teaches people how webhooks work without them having to learn the various bits and pieces that you need for webhooks um, to tunnel through to your, to your thing. Now, finally, uh, tooling uh, uh, is an important one to us as well. And this has been something we've done a lot more with recently. So I first want to talk about the serverless toolkit because, uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of just writing uh, JavaScript into a web page and hoping for the best. Uh, and neither is my friend uh, and colleague Dominic, uh, Dominic Kundal, who's in uh, San Francisco. Uh, and between us, we accidentally ended up writing uh, what became a, a serverless toolkit. Uh, so a while back, uh, Dominic liked the ability to like run the Twilio functions inside the functions UI, but he wanted to be able to do it locally. And so we built a product called Twilio Run, a project called Twilio Run, uh, which is an express server basically that then provides a, a wrapper environment to run things like Twilio functions. Um, I then liked using Twilio Run, but forgot how to set it up every time. So created a generator function called create Twilio function, which allows you to run kind of NPM init Twilio function. And you have uh, the Twilio Run experience ready to go. And between us, we started working on a, on a set of function templates. So these were just example functions that, again, like took um, ideas from like Twimlets and things like that to, um, to give people starter functions that they could use. And this serverless toolkit, um, yeah, all worked nicely together. Uh, around the same time, there was a team working on the Twilio CLI. Uh, and the Twilio CLI is great for um, accessing the API without having to go through the console and doing all that kind of stuff. So the CLI can be installed with uh, npm install g uh, Twilio CLI, or if you're on a Mac, we can brew install Twilio CLI. Um, and then you can do things like with the API, like list all your messages, for example, uh, and some things you can't do with the API, like debugger, uh, like list all your logs, logs uh, in the debugger. Uh, this is my favorite one for webhooks. Uh, if you update your phone number, uh, any Twilio phone number that you have, and give it a voice or SMS URL or, or any of the kind of um, webhook URLs, if you set that to a local host on any port, uh, it'll detect that and start up an ngrok server for you. 
and set the voice URL or the webhook URL to that ngrok server, the ngrok URL, um, and close it down once you're done with it. Uh, editing the phone number in the background. Uh, so again, that's another thing where you don't have to know what the, 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 the tunneling service is. The CLI, CLI just does the job for you. And finally, uh, this allowed us to build up CLI plugins. Uh, and so we took our serverless toolkit and bundled it all together uh, to make, um, uh, so create Twilio function became Twilio serverless init. Um, Twilio run became Twilio serverless start. Uh, and this uh, ngrok flag actually, again, this allows you to start up an ngrok tunnel um, once when you start up your serverless function. And with the API for the, the functions in the serverless environment, we were able to deploy as well. So uh, we could wrap up that entire experience of, um, uh, uh, entire experience of creating and deploying software and Toya functions uh, inside the CLI. Uh, I did want to show a quick demo for that. I don't know if we're going to have time for it. Uh, let me just run it quickly here. I'm going to make that bigger. I run Toya serverless init and give it a, uh, can I call it API days Hong Kong and give it a template because we took those template functions uh, that we had you know, at a repo and then wrap them up into something that we could use to uh, template out uh, entire applications. And so this is create a function working, creating an entire uh, project for a user, for a developer. Um, it is installing all the NPM dependencies. Uh, this particular one is an example voice IVR. Um, so uh, it's very much the same as that studio um, example we saw on the slides earlier. Uh, and so if you, uh, we could npm start, but we can call you serverless start. And like I said, we can uh, give it an ngrok URL. Uh, sorry, tell it to use it with ngrok. Excuse my wrong node uh, version there. And in instantly we have this application that's available to receive webhooks on uh, on on an N uh, on a public URL on ngrok, uh, and this is that uh, XML that it's responding with. And then finally, we can just run Twilio serverless serverless deploy, and that same application will get bundled up and sent off to the Twilio um, serverless runtime, uh, and uh, and be ready to be used in an actual application. Uh, that won't get taken down when ngrok gets taken down. Um, I'm not going to wait for that to deploy because I think we're right at the end here. So I will just wrap up to say that uh, the trouble with webhooks is that they're not clear for developers who don't know how to use them to use. And they can be absolutely crucial to the use of your API and your platform. We found that in so many ways. So we took, uh, so we attacked this in multiple fronts to make it easier for people. If you had simple applications, we have Twimlets and Torbins and that you can edit and change yourself, uh, but never have to really write any code or host any code. By education, we wanted those interactive experiences, including our game, Twilio Quest. For non-developers, and even for developers who just don't want to write the basic stuff, uh, the drag and drop studio is there. And then building up a, a better developer environment using our Twilio serverless toolkit and uh, CLI has made this better for everybody. Uh, and I, I do rarely use the Twilio console now with the CLI available. Uh, if you're interested at all in any of this, uh, I'd love it if you wanted to play Twilio Quest and, and just experience, see what it's about. Uh, that's at twilio.com slash quest. And uh, things like the serverless toolkit and our other open source projects are built under the new Twilio Labs, which does not have a Dr. Twilio with an old logo. Um, and github.com slash Twilio Labs. Come see how we're building them right there. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for listening. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to join you here at API Days today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. So um, sadly, we don't have any time left for any question, but if you have any question, do send a message to Phil for any kind of follow-up to know And I think uh, Phil will be very happy to answer your questions. Absolutely. I'll be right here on the stage for a little bit. I'm going to watch the next talk. Uh, and uh, yeah, find me at, uh, at all those places online as well. Um, yeah. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, Phil.